Um, oh, sorry, my, name, my name is Greg for Federal for Carthay. I have a couple of questions regarding this law, because it is law now. The first question regards the magazine limits, the 10 round Can't magazine hear. limit requirement. Questions 10 round magazine limit. Right, the 10 round magazine uh, limit requirement. Does that exempt private security guards? No. Okay. So, any private security guard, such as an armored car guard, who is risking their life to go out on a truck and carry 10 rounds, and criminals who are not going to abide by the laws will carry 16, 19, 30. That's the first thing you need to change. My brother's an armored car guard. Wrote, and wrote, if he, if he is attacked and, and has 10 rounds, it's, it's unconscionable. You're right. You wrote me an email. You wrote me an email yes, on that issue. I did. And then I, I talked did. to other folks in the Capitol to say, if we're going to make some technical corrections to this, that is probably the most logical you, correction. You put thousands of people because, because, voting for that. Right. What you end up doing, and those people are targeted. We don't even, they're, they're sworn to secrecy for a whole bunch of things, for address and everything else. So yes, the answer is, I've already approached that after I got your email. I Thank you, because I hadn't heard back from you. And yeah, I slightly because disagree with you because I think this magazine limit puts not only armored car guards at risk, but it puts the rest of us I agree. that are concerned for our safety and for the safety of our family. The second thing is, regarding the assault weapons ban, my understanding is the only part of the AR-15 that is considered a rifle is the lower receiver. That's the only thing with the serial number on it. So if I have an AR-15 that's legal because I bought it before this law was enacted, that lower receiver gets damaged, I can never replace that gun. You can get a repair to a licensed gunsmith, but no, you could not order the part yourself and swap it out yourself. Is that in the law that it can be repaired? Yes. Okay. But what if I can't get a repair, then I can no longer buy an assault rifle in the state of Connecticut? You're right. Well, that's possibly taking something away from law-abiding citizens that have a, a, a rifle that they use for targeting, target shooting, for hunting, or whatever. The other question I have is, and people have touched on this before, why was there a need to rush through this? Why was there not thought put into it and really to focus on the mental health aspects and enforcing crimes with violent, violent crimes with weapons? Connecticut had some of the most extensive gun laws in this, in this country and it didn't prevent an animal lanza. Why rush to judgment just to do something? And by the way, you made a comment about the majority was gonna do this, the majority was gonna do that. I depend on you guys as the minority to stand up for me. And because the majority is gonna do it, doesn't mean the minority has to do it also. So I respectfully disagree with you that because the majority was gonna pass it, that the minority didn't have to stand up and say, this is not right. It needs to go back to the drawing board. So let me just explain uh, bills how they get called. Minorities cannot, minority representation cannot bring a bill to the floor of the House or the Senate. We cannot do that. It is called by the majority. The majority sets the calendar for the day and for every session day that we have. You set a calendar. You can bring an amendment to a bill. Perfect. I, I understand that. Okay. I'm so not asking could, you to do that. So I'm asking you to say no. No, no. Let me just back up. Because you asked, why did we rush it? We didn't rush it. The majority was going to call the bill. You know, presumably okay. something like this. They were going to call it. Oh, I understand now, that. I understand that. In, in, you're right. We could have said no and the bill would have passed. We thought we were doing something right. You could disagree with that thought process by ameliorating the bill to the point of bringing it down a whole bunch of notches. And you could say, Len, you could have voted no. I would suggest this would have gone through in weighing that, making the judgment call, plus the other factors we talked to. And I respect the fact that you disagree with that position. I understand it. And on the armor car, not to get off topic, but on the armor car, as soon as I get the affirmative answer from the other side, which may be as early as this week, I will email you. And I didn't email you back because I read it, and I saw it on Wednesday, and I brought it to the folks in the Capitol that talked about this bill. And they felt that was reasonable, but I didn't want to give you false hope until I get an answer this well, week. I see you're more confident on the other side coming back and addressing these things. I, I'm not so confident. But I, again, I'm not I'm not, and I'm not going to belabor this, but the way for the minority to show that they don't agree with the way things are done is to say no and not just say yes because the majority 
was going to pass it in. Thank you for your time. Thank you.